Greetings gamers, over the last couple of weeks we've been looking at how to use Microsoft's OneNote as a dungeon master to run your campaign. And something that a lot of people have asked for is a short video on how I actually run encounters within OneNote. So that's what we're going to do today. Kicking things off, the first thing that you're going to want to do is to make a section for initiatives. This is where you will run the majority of the combat from and it's handy to have it separate as opposed to part of the GM screen. Within the initiative section, you want to import each of your players. I'm just going to use Bedar, who is our token example here, because I've got all his stats ported in already. But you do this for each of the players. The next thing that you want to do is to add the monsters for that particular encounter. For the sake of this example, we're just going to use a variety of goblin type creatures. So we start a new page and we go goblins. If you are running multiple enemies of the same type, so several just bog standard goblins, I find it easier to have them all at one initiative so that they all go one after another in the initiative order. Just speeds things up a whole bunch. So once you've created a page for the goblins, just head over to the SRD or wherever you're getting your monster stats from. Copy all the relative information and paste it in. And I am just going to put the picture up here. And then straight away you've got all your key information for your goblins. If like me, you choose to run your mobs as one initiative bracket, and have all of them on one page in the initiative order in OneNote, then you're still going to want to track things like their HP and any status effects. So what I do for that is I'll insert a table and um, enemy HP notes. And for that I'll just go Goblin 1 and then Goblin 2, Goblin 3. And then for the HP, they all start out at 6 HP. And then throughout the course of the battle, if one of them becomes dazed, for example, I'll put that in the notes so that I know that Goblin 1 is dazed. Another thing I will do before the combat even begins is I roll the initiative for the NPCs and for the monsters just to speed things up a little bit on the day. So I'd roll the initiative and let's say maybe they've got a 15. So I put that in the entry up here. And then when it comes time for combat to begin and I ask my players to roll initiative, Badal might say I scored a 14. In which case I drag his page under the goblins and I know the goblins are going to act before he does. Okay, here you can see I've finished adding in all of the enemies. You can see that for each I've pre-rolled their initiative. And within each, anywhere there's multiple enemies. So for the goblins and also for the go hobgoblins, I've added in those tables so I can track them individually. I've added artwork from the... Paizo website and from the SRD to each of the enemies just so I've got something to describe to my players and all of the enemies stats are in there. The next thing I do before the session is I like to plan out how the enemies are going to act. So looking at the composition of this enemy force we've got a heavy hitter with the bugbear, we've got some melee troops with the hobgoblins so I think that the regular goblins are going to be ranged troops. So what I will do is I will plan out how each of the units is going to act, who they're most likely to target, what they will do if any specific conditions are met. So we'll start with the goblins and we'll just type in during combat. The goblins will use their short bows on the weakest looking party members, meaning those not wearing armor. Goblins aren't incredibly bright, so they're 
not going to realize that just because you're not wearing armor doesn't mean that you're really easy to hit. But they're smart enough to know that someone who isn't wearing armor is probably going to be a better target. Meaning those characters not wearing armor. They will keep falling back behind cover wherever possible. These goblins don't want to be in the fight. They don't want to be dealing with the heavy hitting party members. So they'll just keep falling back away from the players and keep firing their bows. The bugbear is a little bit more of a threat, a bit more hulking, does a little bit more damage. So we will make a note of what we want them to do. So up here, during combat, the bugbear will target the biggest or strongest looking character. So while the goblin archers are trying to pick off some of the unarmed and weaker looking characters, the bugbear is going to charge straight into the fray going for the strongest character. Next, the hobgoblins, and the hobgoblins during combat are going to support the bugbear. They will flank enemies where possible to get the extra to hit bonus, to get the advantage on the enemies. Uh, where possible and if we just look at their equipment they also have bows so they might use their bows but it's unlikely they're more than likely just going to flank the enemies where possible stay either side of the bugbear and systematically go one enemy at a time let's just check the bugbear's equipment three javelins so um before getting into combat, they will throw a javelin whilst on the move. So the bugbear is going to start combat, charge towards the closest enemy. If they can't get there in one charge, they'll throw a javelin on the way. And then finally, the goblin wizard. Now, magic users are a little bit more complicated to plan for because they have a greater range of things that they can do. So during combat stay at the rear of the group obviously because they don't want to be getting hit by anything and let's have a look at some of the armors. Now they've got the mage armor spell and I think that the first thing First spell is going to be Mage Armor on the Bugbear. If this, as an encounter for a low level party, casting Mage Armor on the Bugbear, giving him that plus four armor bonus, is going to be a real threat to the party because it's going to be that much harder for them to hit, and the Bugbear is going to be getting the advantage of flanking from the two Hobgoblins. The second spell. They're likely to cast will be Shocking Grasp on any armoured character. Now, a Goblin Wizard is probably going to be intelligent enough to understand that the electricity is going to be conducted by the armour. Plus, target in an armoured creature, Shocking Grasp is a touch spell against their touch AC which is typically going to be quite low. So doing a Shocking Grasp is going to be quite a powerful spell. So that will be their second spell to cast. And then for the remainder of the fight, cast either Daze or Acid Splash. So you can see that Planning and running the combats is really quite simple. All you have to do 
is port the information in on your NPCs into separate pages, sort them by initiative, pre-rolling initiative, just speeds things up a little bit, spend less time faffing around at the table, and then add some information on what that specific enemy is going to do during combat. As combat progresses, and you need to keep track of things like wounds, so let's say the bugbear is in the middle of combat and takes a hit for six damage. I'll just write in here minus six and I know that it's got 10 HP left. If, for example, the bugbear became dazed because it's an individual creature and it's not in a group initiative, I'd just write dazed into the top. So at a glance, when Bedar's taking his turn, I know, oh well, next round, Bugbear's dazed, isn't going to do anything. And keeping track of status effects like that. So if during the course of the combat, Bedar went unconscious, I would just put that right in the title. So at a glance, when the wizard is coming up and deciding who to cast spell on, well, Bedar's unconscious, so they might either try and take advantage of that and kill him, or think, oh, he's no no threat, he's out of the fight, I better hit this other character who's coming straight at me. And that's how I would run combat within one note. A page for each character or group of characters, roll your monster initiatives before the combat and list them in the title. Where you have several enemies in one initiative band, just make a little table to keep track of their HP and any status effects. And then for individual creatures, put their status effects straight in the title. And finally, for each enemy, just write a little bit about what they're gonna do during the combat above their profile. I really hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, don't forget to hit that like button. And until next time, happy gaming. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for new content every single Friday. And if you want to keep watching, well, there's another couple of videos for you to watch just over there. Happy gaming.